Good evening, and welcome to this observance of the Monday Thursday service, celebration of the Last Supper, where Jesus gathered in a room with his friends and family, those he trusted, those he thought trusted him. There, Jesus embodied for us the very presence of love on the journey the journey that we have been on these past several weeks. Many of you joined in worship in the chapel for Ash Wednesday as we inaugurated this Lenten journey. And as we marked our foreheads with ash, we contemplated the morality to which we belong collectively in this world. We leaned into the depths of our own inner journey contemplating and committing to listen deeply as week by week we ask the question, who am I? Who is God? And who are we together on this journey? So as we gather at this time of Passover where Jesus is celebrating this final meal together at table, we do so remembering the promises that we exist together for good, that we are called as a human story, as the only story to make a way for love to lead. Such an, impor an important word for us right now, as so often our days are filled with questions and doubt and grief, as we long for the day when we can gather, when we can hug and embrace one another, with the love of God, with the promises that live within us, but so much long for the tangible expression that we are so used to. So let us gather in mind, body, and spirit. Let us center ourselves, the core of our being. We are called to dine together in this divine and sacred experience in this very real, tangible human experience of eating and drinking, of sharing together laughter, questions, and even contempt in some cases. So let us go to Holy Scripture and hear now from the Gospel of John, chapter 13. It was just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave the world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served. The devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter. You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do not, do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now you know these things 
you will be blessed if you do that. And then later, Jesus predicts Peter's denial. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give love one another. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love each other. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Words of hope for a hopeful people in such a time as this. As we continue reflecting together, gathering together in body and spirit, let us hear these words of Jesus. Let them echo not only for us this evening as we take of this meal together, but also as we continue down this holy week road with Jesus, knowing what is to come, but anticipating all along something greater that we might change the status quo, that we might be the savior of the day, that the end result might be different. I think this is a great reminder to us about life about the purpose of the journey. Sometimes we see an end in sight and it, seal, it, it almost feels self-perpetuating that we are maybe in a relationship or relationships with others, with friends or family, coworkers, neighbors, siblings. We think that because of the current situation, how the relationship is defined, it must be. And so instead of choosing hope or anticipating that our actions might influence the relationship and something else might live and grow, we allow the end in sight to dictate today and then give away tomorrow. I've been thinking about this COVID experience, everything I feel right now is defined by where, the location, where we are. We are in our homes or we are in our car if we are picking up drugs from the pharmacy or a grocery um, delivery. So sometimes location can feel like the sole definer of our existence. Maybe we are separated from loved ones. Maybe location is metaphorical, and maybe we are finding ourselves right now so anxious um, and full of fear. And so we are, are grounded in that anxiety and can't find our footing. The location feels paralyzing. We're frozen in place. I think about Jesus gathering in the upper room with his friends, with the disciples. And I think about each one of them, how they must have felt, what was going through their minds. What did they know? What did they anticipate or fear? And of the one, the one who I think gets the brunt of all of the bad jokes, the one that we probably each could have found ourselves sitting beside or in the same chair with, Judas, who betrayed Jesus, who made it known his location in the room, the anxiety and the energy that must have been shared in that space, the location of being the isolated betrayer. I think we might put all of our own anxieties or fears or even wrongdoings or self-betrayals upon Judas. Maybe that outlet feels good knowing that someone will take the blame. Someone is responsible for what's happening. Someone must be responsible for this virus. Something must be responsible for children who are not able to get food during the day, for our elder 
elderly friends and neighbors who are quarantined, maybe in their assisted living or nursing room homes, maybe that's you for all of us who feel isolated in our location. Think about that meal, and I wonder what it must have felt like to be in that particular time and place, in that location. The beloved friend of Jesus, the one whom Jesus loved, who reclined in the seat next to him. What did it feel like to sit in that location? Location sometimes can be the sole factor that defines our todays or our tomorrows. But I think what Jesus was trying to do in the teaching of the foot washing was to remind them that it doesn't necessarily matter the location. All of their feet are dusty when they are the feet of Jesus, the hands and the feet of love making manifest God's love in the world. No matter which journey we are on, we all appear just as dirty and we all need to be cleansed doesn't matter how we approach the situation that we're in right now. We're all in a similar place. We're all, we're all seated around, maybe in our living rooms, maybe in the kitchen, maybe somewhere in a quiet corner in our homes, maybe outside on a walk. We are all feeling isolated from our communities, from those we love. We are also all brought together by the common love of our spirits. We're connected by something so much greater than ourselves, the fire that burns in our hearts that is the seed of the soul. So in breaking this bread together and looking around the room at each of their eyes, measuring the content or worry or anxiety that was in the room, Jesus decided to make location irrelevant. Location was irrelevant. This sort of metaphorical experience of taking and eating this bread reminds us that no matter who we are or where we are on this journey of life, we are welcome at the table. We are welcome at God's table. We are welcome as members seated around this table. We are welcome with Jesus who took bread and looking around and listening. He broke the bread. He blessed it. And he said, take and eat. For this is my body broken for you. Do so to remember me. He passed the bread and each one of them taking it, took a bite and were nourished in the same place, but were given life-giving bread that would nourish them outside of this time and place. When they were on the journey, when they were seated and behind closed doors, afraid, they were walking on the beach in awe of the blessings in front of them when they were feeding and healing and being fed, and even when they were facing death themselves, this would be the bread that would help them endure, that would remind them of love. And then Jesus looking around the room and realizing that there needed to be drink on the table, he took it and poured it out saying, this is the cup of the promise of my love. I pour it out for you and I offer it to you as living water, the promise of my love that will feed and nourish you and give you everything you need for the journey ahead, knowing that they didn't understand what he was saying. He took these gifts, these simple elements, bread and wine, he offered them as he offered themselves offered them himself with generosity and abundance. He nourished the very faith and faithlessness that was seated around him. What a gift to remember. What a gift to realize that we are not on the journey alone and that our 
physical location right now is irrelevant when it comes to remem remembering that we are interconnected, that we belong to each other. And that we, when we take what is so simple, the bread from our table, and the drink that fills our cup, and share it with a neighbor, we walk food over and drop it on the porch. And we open the window and smile as our neighbors walk by. We are also offering the gift that keeps on giving. God's love poured out. Jesus said, they will know you are my disciples by your love. May we embody the love of God. May we remember that we will never be separate from God's love. Never separate for, from the love that is shared between us. We close our eyes at night and we listen to the stillness and the silence. We are assured that God is there. That love that breaks down barriers, that turns the world upside down with justice, equality, love, and blessing. We too are on the journey toward resurrection life. May these gifts be healing for you. May this table always feel like an open invitation for you. And may you invite others to sit at table with you. Know that we are in this together, that God is good each and every day. And that as we continue this Lenten journey, as we wake up in anticipation of Good Friday, as we close our eyes, Remember, we will know that resurrection is just around the corner. Resurrection is available to us each and every moment. As the fire that burns on this very night, I pray you know the love of God that is with and within. Bless you, and may God's peace be with you.